Dan Dick out here on the ISO with the Gonzaga Nation Media Network. As always, Gonzaga Game Day, we preview the matchup with the opposing team's head coach for an assistant. Today, Gonzaga takes on San Diego, the Toreros, with a new coach at the head of the seat. Uh, you may know the name well, Steve Lavin. Coach, thanks for joining. Great to be with you, Dan. Hey, let, let's just jump right into you had a couple successful runs uh, as a head coach, first at UCLA, then at St. John's. Then you kind of took my step, my seat uh, in the broadcast booth. What allured you back to coaching? Because um, the, the, the stresses are much different. Uh, the demands are much different. Yeah, I think a life in basketball, you know, going back to, you know, picking up the ball as a youngster and um, 10 years old, you start playing and then through high school and college and then fortunate to get into the coaching business in 1988 uh, with coach Katie at Purdue. And, and that led to coming to UCLA. And, uh, then the, you know, run in TV and then back to coaching at St. John's another run in TV and now back to coaching uh, at USD. So I think growing up around the game and uh, the elements that, you know, uh, so well of team sports, that um, are attractive. And so teaching on a college campus, the camaraderie, you know, with your players and your staff and the common goals and objectives that you have, um, competition. So, and I enjoy the development aspect of working with young people and, and trying to put them on positive trajectories beyond basketball. You know, and I think the education helps with that, but also just the values, some of the virtues you learn through team sports. Uh, sustain you for life beyond the sport itself. So a combination of, of all those elements. And I lost my mother and father, um, you know, over uh, the past, you know, eight years. And so I think that played a part, you know, um, being in television afforded a pace and uh, some autonomy to be able to caretake uh, for my dad and the home stretch of his life. And then again, for my mother uh, who passed in 2018 on January 25th. Um, but now that both of them have passed on, um, that natural, uh, you know, inkling to want to be part of a family and, and team sports provides that as well. So it's a basketball family, but um, it's a special opportunity and a privilege and something that I, I uh, treasure and, and take very seriously. How has the college game changed uh, from your last stint at St. John's till now? Because uh, when I've watched your teams play at USD, they look different than some of your the the style that you had at St. John's. Uh, how has has that changed um, since you've gotten back into that coaching role? You know, some of it is we're learning as we go because this is the first year. And so uh, not only learning about our personnel um, in terms of the players I inherited, and then uh, we signed or brought in 12 players in a 12-week period last spring uh, after being hired in early April. Uh, so it's not as though we had a great deal of time with the newcomers either. And so we'll have a much better sense of things drum rolling into our second season our second year here at USD. Um, so, you know, taking a lot of notes uh, also on the conference, you know, just in terms of our opponents and the style of play uh, of the West coast conference, um, definitely the elements of recruiting are different than when I was at UCLA or St. John's, um, the frequency of transfers, the transfer portal, the grad transfer portal, um, you know, being able to transfer without having to sit out, um, you know, that first time that you move from a four-year school to a four-year school. So um, I think, you know, those elements, I, when I decompress after this first 12-month run and we get together as a coaching staff and uh, even meeting with leadership at the university and, and just putting our heads together and kind of, you know, looking at the, the map ahead of us and uh, the path ahead of us and uh, figuring, you know, what adjustments that we're going to have to continue to make. Uh, NIL is something that's new, uh, this alternate universe that I've returned to uh, named college basketball. And so, 
you know, I'd say in terms of our team this year, you know, offensively, um, we put up good numbers. You know, I think we're top 50, top 60, and have been most of the year at the offensive end of the floor. Uh, defensively is where our struggles have been. And, and we've had, at least in my career, an unprecedented season in terms of injuries. I've never, and it's it's uh, even our team doc, Doc Murphy, who's the former Chargers, uh, you know, team doctor way back in the day. Uh, and it's been at USD for years. Uh, he's said he's never experienced anything like this in any sport, uh, not just men's basketball. So we've really uh, just try and take it day to day and continue to make adjustments and modify and, and uh, do the best we can. Our players, I'm impressed with their mindset in terms of not getting discouraged and uh, players being ready. We've had a number of players who early in the year weren't receiving minutes that now are either starting or they're in our rotation and receiving big minutes. And so there's a silver lining there in terms of looking to next year. They've, they've gotten some reps, some game experience, and so they're further along in their development because of uh, the number of injuries to our starters. You mentioned the, the the injuries that you guys have had. And so it's been a different uh, assortment of starting lineups throughout the year. But if, when you are healthy, you got some really good offensive firepower. Uh, Marcelo Serlington, Jace Townsend uh, are the first two that come to mind. Eric Williams, a transfer from Oregon. Give us a little snapshot of how you want to play. Well, number one, if, you know, we can get stops defensively and we demonstrated that in our last game against St. Mary's in the second half, you know, uh, we were down 23 points. Uh, we ended up finishing the game on a 24 to four run against St. Mary's. And that was really fueled by getting defensive stops. And so whether we're in our, you know, three quarter court press, whether we're in our zone coverages or our man to man coverages, uh, at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to you know force a team into a contested shot and uh clean up the boards um, and then that leads to a run out so a string of stops a string of shutouts that gets you out in transition for uh, you know some easy opportunities then if not in second gear you know we want to get the ball to the second side look inside play inside out and with the shorter clock that's another change uh, from when I last coached at St. John's, uh, you know, there's, there's probably more ball screens than ever. And there's been ball screens for decades, but it seems now it's more prevalent than ever. So uh, late clock, you know, getting your better players involved in a two-man game, playing in pairs or tandems, whether it's, you know, playing inside out with a postman or, uh, you know, your pick and pop or your ghost action, uh, trying to get, you know, your more efficient ball handlers, as you know, like you were, uh, to go downhill where they can make reads and make decisions to play, make or shot make. Um, so we'd like to play at a faster tempo. Not every team's going to allow you to do that. Uh, the teams that have had success against Gonzaga, right, have kept the scores more in the 60s and 70s range. Um, so a team like St. Mary's, they control the tempo. They, they impose their preferred style of play on opponents very effectively, and they've been successful doing that, that for decades so not every team's going to allow you to play uh pedal the metal up tempo but i'd like off of our defense to be able to play fast then show judgment on the half court uh, to have an intelligent purposeful approach in, in terms of reversals and dump downs inside and uh, you know our ball movement and screening for one another and and understanding what a good shot is uh, but building cohesion is one of the more difficult aspects um, of team sports and in basketball because there's an interdependence on one another. And I think in this era, uh, it's uh, as challenging as ever uh, because you don't have the continuity uh, of your roster from year to year with the turnover. And so we're striving for that. We hope to have players that want to stay here four or five years if you redshirt them. But if you just look at the numbers, the analytics, the trends, it uh, is going to be a situation where almost like junior college coaches, you've got to adjust to your roster and tweak your system and style of play. So it fits, uh, you know, the group of players you're working with. And so, uh, but yeah, in the ideal defense, creating your offense and building cohesion. Um, and we've struggled with that this year to consistently sustain cohesion, the injuries and the newcomers, the combination of a uh, first year staff too, uh, in terms of us working together, 
Um, even though we're familiar with one another, it's still different when you put together a staff of nine and you bring in 12 new players and then you have uh, the unprecedented amount of injuries, which lead to different combinations of players. So you put that all together and we're just learning as we go and, uh, and trying to continue to teach and not get discouraged or frustrated. But, but again, uh, trying to control the controllables, as they say, because there's so many aspects or elements we can't control. My well, coach, I appreciate the time. Uh, best of luck. Welcome to the WCC. I know we've texted over the last few few months, but uh, enjoy the kennel tonight. Uh, best of luck finishing out this season, the WCC tournament, and uh, getting the program in the direction that you're looking forward to it being in. Thank you, Dan. Tall task, but uh, we're up for the challenge. Appreciate it, and we'll talk soon. I'll see you tonight.